Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch Transformers Revenge of the Fallen to see how accurate all the science and technology in this movie really are. This cube is one awesome piece of sci-fi technology, even a sliver of it, because we know that the Transformers are not made of any metals that we have on Earth, they're made of Transformium, which means that this cube is not only tr taking all of the kitchen appliances and turning them into Transformers, it's also changing the molecular makeup of the elements that it comes into contact with. The cube only makes Decepticons. At first I thought maybe that's how all Transformers start out. Maybe these little guys don't even know what they're doing. They were literally just born a few seconds ago. They might be acting out of instinct and just thinking they're surrounded by threats. The reality, however, was revealed to us in the first Transformers movie back when we were introduced to NBE-1. All the digital modern age was created from reverse engineering Megatron, which is why all of Earth's technology, when affected by the cube, will start off as a Decepticon. The AllSpark even seems to favor Decepticons because it repaired Frenzy's body when he was just looking at it, but when Bumblebee held it, his voice didn't come back to him. I think this is because the original purpose of the AllSpark was to power Cybertron, the Transformers' home planet. Since Megatron's mission is to bring Cybertron back and continue the Transformers' race, while Optimus Prime seeks to protect the human race even at the cost of killing his own kind, the AllSpark will not be in Optimus's favor. We can see the microwave and the phone were affected by the radiation of the cube, and they even begin to transform, but they never made it to the final cut of the movie. Early animation shows they were intended to be, and two phone bots were meant to be on screen. One more annoying than the other, it got microwaved and destroyed, which is reminiscent of the way the Nokia phone bot died in a box during the first movie. Ejector, the toaster, is the only kitchen appliance bot to get his own toy. It's the same appliance that made an appearance in the Revenge of the Fallen Mountain Dew commercial. This ties in well with the best known AllSpark mutation being the Mountain Dew vending machine, a Decepticon named Dispensor. His toy shows him transforming into a Mountain Dew delivery truck, which reads Mood Whiplash for copyright reasons. This isn't the first time Sam has handled something like this. In fact, he held the entire cube with his bare hands and ran a couple of city blocks with it. He used it to kill Megatron, and throughout the whole time, it never infected his mind like the small shard did. How did a little piece do all of this to him, but the all spark in its entirety had no effect? Humanoid robots are being built, and they're both awe-inspiring and terrifying to look at. This video from Boston Dynamics is showing their robot Atlas running on an obstacle course. But this thing is crazy! Imagine this thing running next to all the other humans in a marathon race, just, I don't know, chilling? You'd be like, man, what the heck is this? Not only can it overcome obstacles, maintain its balance, there's multiple, which is great, it will flex on you after it catches you. The other uses for this robot are to do human-like tasks, which is dropping off tools to a construction worker, going to dangerous sites, and it can even build a path to get there. Boston Dynamics is coming up with some crazy stuff that is both scary and the coolest thing ever. Megatron grew up to become the High Lord Protector of Cybertron, while his adopted brother, Optimus, had become the head scientist of Cybertron. Eventually, Megatron came across the Fallen, who corrupted him and convinced him that the AllSpark is supposed to be his, and then when Megatron and his followers went to go get it, they were stopped by Optimus and his Autobots, which began the whole Cybertronian war. There are some key differences between Megatron from the first movie and Revenge of the Fallen. Primarily, he's weaker. This is because when he was resurrected from the AllSpark shard, his old parts were rusted from being under the ocean for too long, and the unfortunate Decepticon was torn to pieces so his parts would transfer to Megatron. Which is why his character design is so different between the two films. 
Megatron was stronger than Optimus in the first movie, as shown by their battle when Optimus was getting his ass handed to him. Optimus decided he was going to lose the fight, which is when he asked Sam to fuse the Allspark with his chest so Megatron couldn't get his hands on it. This defeat of Optimus should come as no surprise because he was facing off against the same Megatron during the Civil War on Cybertron, which resulted in the Decepticons' victory. This time around, Megatron was bigger, heavier, and much slower. Optimus was running circles around him, which is why he called in other Decepticons to help him, unlike the first movie where he happily took on Optimus 1v1. The thing about Megatron is, his motivations as a villain are completely understandable. He wants his race of people to survive. Megatron is a leader who embodies the ends justify the means, and his motivation is not to just kill everybody and everything and rule- like, well, long term, yeah, he does want to be the ruler of a galaxy, but truly, he just wants his own people and race to continue. That's not a bad motivation. Without more Energon, just like Starscream says, the hatchlings will keep dying. There will be no new Transformers ever. Optimus is willing to kill his own kind to prevent Megatron from achieving this goal because long term it will be to become a dictator of the galaxy, but in the short term, I'm actually with Megatron on this one. <laughs> He is one of my favorite Transformers, and that's also one of my favorite planes. And that, that, that is my favorite plane. That is a SR-71 Blackbird. It's in so many movies and way ahead of its time. What makes this plane so unique is that it holds the world record for fastest jet, zooming at over three times the speed of sound, or 2300 miles per hour. The Blackbird was built as a reconnaissance or spy plane collecting information not meant for combat. Which is very fitting for Jetfire actually because he is a seeker sent by the Fallen to collect information about the Matrix and different Energon sources here on Earth. Jetfire's transformation into the SR-71 Blackbird is also one of the few transformations where the transformer and its vehicle actually have the same purpose. The big difference between the Matrix and the Allspark is Repair and Revive. The Allspark is able to repair any Transformer it wants to, but it can't bring them back to life. The Matrix can revive any Transformer by merging it with their Spark, but it can't repair the damages done to them, so they come back in a similar state to when they died. It was the reason why the Fallen was so easily able to overpower Optimus and take back the Matrix. Originally, the Matrix was an artifact passed on between leaders, granting them unimaginable power while also allowing them to communicate with the previous Primes. Only a Prime would be able to use the Matrix until Sam Witwicky, who used it to save Optimus, was allowed to by his previous owners. It was also a primary weapon in the battle against Unicron, the Transformers' god of chaos. Another huge advantage that Matrix provides is invincibility. You heard that right. As long as Optimus has that Matrix in his chest, he cannot die. It doesn't mean he can't sustain incredibly heavy damage and be one inch from death, but the Matrix won't allow his spark to go out, forever keeping him alive. Whether he's formed from 6, 7, 8, or 9 of the Constructicons, Devastator is a giant amongst giants. Devastator is a tormented being, his very formation racking his component construction cons with pain and stressing them to the point of breaking, both physically and mentally. The imperfect fusion process produces a mind that is very much less than the sum of all of its parts. Rage and pain are all he knows, pushing aside whatever intelligence he might possess. Devastator relies almost on pure instinct in battle. Devastator's rendering in high resolution caused computers to brick and their motherboards to fry from the computing power necessary to process over 11 million polygons. Combined transformations increased power level by a lot. Optimus took down Megatron and the Fallen with ease when he combined with Jetfire. In this version, Optimus was using his own body with enhancements from Jetfire, which he removed when the fight was won. Jetfire is the only Transformer we've seen besides the Fallen to be able to open a space bridge, allowing him to teleport great distances even across planets. It's unclear if this ability was transferred to Optimus during the combined transformations because we never saw him use it 
but we did see when Devastator was created from all of his Constructicons, he did gain additional powers like that gravity well. That little mini insect drone is, it's scary to say that we're not very far off from that. In fact, the drone technologies are starting to really border the ethics side of engineering. There's a fish drone that we use for learning about the ocean, but most tech fails underwater under long periods of time, and it's a really unique engineering challenge. The dragonfly drone and studying how their wings move for maybe better airplanes or any sort of airborne technology, as well as learning about how these unique insects actually interact and continuing to develop this technology to be the size of a little dragonfly one day. Things get really crazy when we start making cyborgs out of animals. There are engineers who instead of developing a fully electric drone in the shape of an animal, hijack the nervous system of a biological animal and control them in the same way. This is being done to the scale of insects to larger reptiles like turtles, controlling their movements and putting a camera on them like a GoPro to see their perspective or for other nefarious purposes. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you all have a great rest of your day.